over and over again, and he's sleeping on the floor, just absolutely pissed. Like, shut up! But yeah, I forgot about that. I had to fucking sleep on the floor because Big Futon took up the whole <laughs> fucking couch. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I was going to buy an air mattress, but I just didn't end up doing it. So, I mean, I feel really bad for that. I apologize. Um, it's all good. Uh, when you come back, to the new place, Austin. Mm. Uh, the bed will be here tomorrow, so we're all good on mm. that. So no worries there. Nice. Yeah, you got plenty of room. How many square feet is that? Two thousand total, sixteen hundred living. Mm. So any when they say living, obviously that's like AC and whatnot. So I got. So it's not nine thousand. No, <laughs> not nine thousand square feet. It's it's a, a about a fifth of it. Yeah, no. I mean, we can't all just absolve uh, a Victoria's Secret store that went out of business, you know? What did I, mean, I say? I was... Absolve. Is that, I think, that's what I meant. That makes sense, right? Absolve. Absolve, yes. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. I mean, look it up. What's Webster Dictionary called Absolve, so. I think it's like, take ownership of after. <clears throat> I thought, like... you know, I'm thinking dissolve. I was thinking like it set or declare someone free from blame guilt or responsibility uh i mean technically you're mm, not wrong they did absolve the space so therefore so they didn't have to be responsible for it correct yeah they don't have to pay rent on it so that, that kind of makes sense we'll go yeah. with it i see what you did there absolve it was it was used a shit ton back in the 1850s <laughs> <laughs> as what what did they use it for Stuart absolved Lady Fredericks of her husband after he murdered him with a knife. Speaking of 1850s, you see uh, it was that turtle's birthday over the weekend that's like 190 years old. So when's his, what year was he born? I think like 1860 something. Also. So Tyler, uh, to put that in perspective um, for like sports fans. This turtle, Jonathan, I believe his name is, was born the year that Perry Ellis enrolled at Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, to kind of give a little reference point there. <laughs> uh, this, <laughs> the turtle was, um, was fighting for its life on the, the seas of Normandy while Perry Ellis was uh, in his tuxedo going to... Uh, freshman formal yeah. at Kansas University. Well, I guess so, um, kind of along the same topic, but, you know, obviously tortoises live very long lives. Um, I guess there have been instances in the, you know, somewhat, like, I was going to say near future, but in, like, recent history is what I meant to say, that they fell, they found, like, sh like musket bullet casings from the Civil War, like, in... The tortoises shells so like that just holy shit <laughs> goes to so show like how long they live for oh yeah well i mean that was gonna get into my next question how if you're like an archaeologist or whatever the hell you are that mm -hmm. is like a a pro at turtles how if you mm -hmm. not archaeologist are, but <laughs> aren't around them the whole entire time how can you tell their age is, is there like Hmm. notches on their on their shell like a tree yeah or... that's a good question i would i would probably say that as well you know how they got the crevices and there's kind of like notches that go up yeah um i'm sure there's like <clears throat> bone marrow and dna stuff they could do but you know it's a good question like obviously no one was alive in 1860 to well, see the jonathan birth of jonathan alive? yeah it was, he, it was like 190 something this past saturday where's he at I have no idea. Is he just chilling in an ocean with like a neck monitor on, tracking his every move? <laughs> I think he's in captivity because, so, uh, John uh, at one ninety, Jonathan. This was February fourth, two thousand twenty-two. So earlier this year, uh, world's oldest, I think, land animal. Uh. So, at his home on the South Atlantic island of St. Helena, a volcanic mm. British overseas territory. So, another thing, too, about Jonathan. He had, Did he uh, meet Charles Darwin? 
Probably. Probably. That was probably uh, Jonathan was his pet as a child. But he had a, he had a partner like Francesca or something. Turns out after like 100 years, they're like, oh, hey, this thing that we thought was a monster clit is actually, in fact, a small dick. <laughs> so it, 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 homeboy's <laughs> wife, you know, pulled about, uh, you know, pulled a little Manti Teo, catfished him. And it's actually a dude, so and Jonathan's like, ah, fuck it. We're already 100, 100 years in, and then, you know, they're still sexually active. Yeah, I mean, in that world, they call it uh, sea turtle. Um, yep. she, yeah, Jonathan got sea turtle. So. Yeah, hard. hard. Hard sea turtle. Well, speaking of Manti Teo, have you seen the documentary yet? <clears throat> no, I have not. I've seen, like, uh, like clips of it. And mm-hmm. now, is that, a, is that a dude or is that a chick that that uh like catfished them it was a dude now is a chick gotcha okay. right <clears throat> so i guess you know transitioning over the years to where you know over the phone probably sounded somewhat like a female but yeah i don't know if i just never knew all the details of it but you know just seeing the stuff resurfacing how and like this person like they knew each other or they grew up in the same hometown of hawaii oh snap um, <clears throat> you know that that uh once someone caught wind of the catfish the guy who was pretending to be the girl like pretended that they died and then you know i guess buzzfeed got an anonymous email went to their own uh you know they did their own investigation and then that's when everything came out back in the day but i also didn't know he played in, uh, not this past season, but the year before. He he played for the Chicago Bears. He played in uh, one of their games. Well, um, he, he also played for the Saints, if I'm not mistaken. Right, so that was like up until 2019. And then the 2020 season, he was on the Bears. I thought he was like one and done uh, for the Chargers. Like, he was actually pretty productive for the Saints, if I do remember. Um, yeah, I was reading. He like he led the the team in tackles for loss one year. Yeah, like he wasn't bad. Um, you know, honestly, at the back of your mind to kind of keep you going, it's it's like a little bit like Water Boy. Yeah. Like H two O, and said he's like saying that fake person's name or picturing picturing them, and then picturing the catfish's face on the body. Mm-hmm. And it's absolutely obliterating them. But, mm-hmm. I mean, that's at least what I would do. Yeah. So, Tyler, if, if you do or don't believe in karma, I, I'm definitely a firm believer. The universe, uh, you know, took pity on Manti. And now, dude, is just like a walking W. I was looking. I was like, is this dude on Instagram? There's no way he's on social media after, you know, everything that transpired. He is. He also has a smoking hot wife, has a nice healthy kid um and you know like i saw this instagram post of thanks bears we'll see what the next chapter is so <clears throat> dare i say we might see manti teo back in the nfl yeah that'd I be mean, a huge redemption <clears throat> story i mean he's probably like in his 30s by now like mid 30s so you know probably not too much time left in the league uh probably gonna play for like the texans or, or someone of that nature yeah he's on he's, the got back some, he's got a few he's years. The, he's on the back nine. He's like on hole 12, hole 13, 14. I mean, I get football is a little different, and obviously he struggled with his injuries, but you talk about like UFC fighters, they say their prime is like 28 to 34. Yeah. Which, I, well, I, I feel like with linebackers, their prime is like 25 to like 32. Yeah. So he's got one year left, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But speaking of UFC, did you happen to watch the fights this weekend? I did not. One of the craziest UFC knockouts I've ever seen live. Um and what the best in recent recent memory of me. You know, I've past year actually I've watched a decent amount of UFC. I'm definitely more of a fair weather fan. But, you know, obviously you've heard of Kamar Usman, yep. you know, the baddest dude in UFC right now, had the longest active win streak. Um Clearly was about to win by decision. You know, he dominated the whole fight. Leon Edwards just hung in there, did did his thing, didn't get taken down, knocked out, obviously, s- submitted. 
it was a minute left in the fifth round, Tyler. Um, you know, I'm just kind of there bullshitting Mark, Connor, Keith, or watching the fight. Like, all right, this one's over. Let's wrap it up. Um, a minute left. He, Edwards just goes with, like, this fake left, and at the same time, he's, like, simultaneously given a left head kick. And just, like, right when he throws the left hook, Usman, like, ducks down, and the left leg comes up right to the jaw, just instant knockout. You know how sometimes when they see him, like, you know, go down to the ground just to try to finish him off, make sure he's done. Edwards knew instantly he was just out. He did the, you know, the spirit fingers, like, that's my boy. (laughs) (laughs) When uh, What's-His-Face got knocked out, he's like, ah. He was just (laughs) laying there on the ground, like, just became an instant meme. You know, he's sitting there. If you saw the picture, he's just, like, looking up into heaven or something. He's like, what the fuck just happened? Um, But it, it was insane. Would you be able to pull up the video for that? Like maybe a YouTube clip of of that knockout? Because now I'm interested to see. I know I yeah. saw all the reactions of like you know everybody ringside, Joe Rogan, Daniel Cormier. Um, you know I haven't been active in the UFC lately. Um, I'm also a, a, a Fairweather fan. Uh, I love Usman. You know I, I've always thought he was a, a great fighter along with um, who's the other guy? Uh, the, uh, he has like an Adesanya. African, Adesanya. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love Adesanya. Dope. All right, so this is, I guess, uh, even a little uh, like recap of the whole fight, so you can kind of get more so of a picture. Usman, um, negative three forty five or minus, I should say, favorite. Edwards was a plus two eighty five underdog. So let me share the screen with you real quick and sound we'll put it on the remote hopefully yeah, everything's put, in order just put like sound like all the way down so i can um yeah it's at the lowest well i'll com- we'll commentate it all right yeah it's kind of a crazy night but yeah this you know kind of this wasn't even a great fight oh um see that clip right there that shit hurt my leg I, i'm yeah. surprised he didn't tear his acl so Edwards, I think they might do like highlights from each round. This was round one. Edwards did come out strong, had a very uh, solid round one. But as you see here, Usman just beating up on him uh, for the next few rounds until the Hail Mary, which we'll witness. Usman kind of looks like Anderson Silva a little bit. Also, you can't trust a guy that wears the shorts that Usman is wearing. Oh, the floppy ones, yeah. That I, I just don't understand how that's comfortable. Just wear the fucking ones that Edwards has on and call it a day. There it is. Oh my god. So okay, they they didn't do round by round, but let me pause it real quick. Uh, let me s- that shit okay. Just came out of so nowhere. look at look at fifty nine seconds left. Round five, like I said, uh, you know, Usman was up the whole fight. Can I change the speed real quick? Watch, I'm gonna do it in half 0.5, speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, he throws the fake left hook, and then the leg just kind of whips up after it, and just catches him clean. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Wait, rewind it. Do like half of that. Do like 0.25. All right. That shit was gnarly, dude. dude insane. Not right, too far. Just leave it there. I think we got it at a good spot. Oh, yeah. He ducks and then oh! just straight. And Usman, Usman ducked into it. That's what it. I'm saying. He ducked the jab, but then he just came up at the same time. Dude, it was insane. I don't know if they'll show uh, Rogan's reaction, but dude went crazy. Watch this one. Boom. Oh, and right in that God. sweet spot on the jaw too, which is where the that's, knockout happens. That's yeah, that's full shin right there. Like you're getting killed by that shin. I wish, I wish they had uh, Joe Rogan's reaction. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much the same when anything crazy happens, but yeah, we're not missing much. He was just, I don't know. <laughs> made like a crazy like surprise face because it was insane like i said the fight was over that was the only way that uh edwards could have won the fight but it was incredible and then earlier in the night uh this fight right here rock old um <laughs> i guess i'll share the screen with you again um he was like getting beat up and his nose was all bloody 
and then like at the last few seconds he's on top of the other guy and he just like rubs blood all over his face <laughs> just like straight scumbag that's like that should be isn't that illegal or is that illegal if you have like should an be STD? illegal well they i mean you test for like aids and stuff so this was like the end of it and he's like i know i'm gonna lose look at he's just wiping his bloody face all over the guy jesus christ <laughs> disgusting that made me a little if, a little queasy yeah like imagine like your mouth is slightly open and all you taste is blood like oh my god another <laughs> man's blood like if i'm going down on a chick while she's on a period that's a different oh, story jesus but jesus <laughs> christ what just had to go there just stay up at the clit and you'll be all right <laughs> You don't need to go down in the canal. <laughs> oh, Stay on the shore, man. You know, it's safe up there. <laughs> I always say if the river's red, take the dirt road. Mm. I say just lay lay down some towels or hop in the shower. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I go for the ladder on that one. <laughs> Easier clean up. You're not ruining towels. Yeah, you're right. I only have two towels in this place right now. And I hate doing laundry, so I'm not going to waste them on some period blood. Yeah, right? How big is your shower? <laughs> big enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, me, I don't need much room, baby. You know me. <laughs> I'm like a worm. <laughs> <laughs> we make it I'm... work. We got we got those we got little uh the things like the shelves built in, you know, the little, little indent. Recess boxes? Yeah, you know, just like the things that kind of protrude out. You can put your soap on. Oh, the but corner it's like, shelves. Yeah, but it's like built in. You know, put a leg up on there like a like a BMX bike peg. <laughs> we'll get the business. <laughs> uh, we'll stretch you out. Get, get your hammies loose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure, we can multitask. I'll put some conditioner in your hair at the same time from behind you. <laughs> i'll wash your back golly <laughs> get the loop i'll put some soap on i got you yeah. oh shit um but yeah no great great fight this weekend well austin speaking of the fights um there was some big news in mm. ufc this past weekend uh with dana white um obviously yeah. affecting me uh, <laughs> as a raiders fan um dana white came out said that he had a deal with Brady and Gronk to go to the Raiders to sign with the Raiders back in 2020. And basically it was a done deal. Brady was looking at houses. Gronk already agreed to it. And then next thing you know, John Gruden puts the kibosh on it, says no to the trade <laughs> uh, to make it happen or the signing, whichever it was, whichever it was. And the rest is history. So, Tyler's uh, losers of the week, Austin. Definitely mm. John Gruden. Mm -hmm. um, but also John Gruden. Also is, you. Well, yeah. <laughs> but John Gruden is also the biggest winner in Tampa. Mm. Uh, he has now uh, produced two championship teams uh, for Tampa Bay. Uh, indirectly, almost. Yeah. But st nonetheless, still has. And uh, has lost the Raiders two championships. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I ever see uh, John Gruden in Tampa, it's on site. You're gonna catch a fade, um, and I'm not talking about the football throw. I'm talking about a fade to the to the back of your big ass head. How upset were you when you heard that? Oh, I was very upset. Like, were you just like, ah, oh, whatever, like it happened, like we're past it, or were you like, fuck, like seeing Brady go down to Tampa and win that Super Bowl, knowing like, yeah, the Raiders didn't have that yeah. great of a roster. But he would have recruited guys like he did to Tampa. And there's a good chance, you know, they at least would have had better seasons um, than they did without him. Yeah, I mean, a few things. First off, I was very mad in the moment. Granted, I don't think he would have done what he did if it wasn't Tampa because of all the, the players that they had around him. I do think they had good players, but it wasn't, you know, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, plus all the defensive players that they had. Um, and second... You know, it kind of hurts because, like, I know in that moment, if Tom Brady came to the Raiders, I would have been like, man, fuck this. I don't want Tom Brady. I hate him. Hmm. Uh, not knowing the Tampa Tom that's out there. Uh, plus, it would have taken away from the, the history that was in Tampa Bay, you know, me being here. Uh, so seeing it live in person, which was very interesting. 
uh, all the games that I went to <clears> live <throat> with Tom Brady too as well. So there, there's some pros and cons to it. Also, yeah. Tom Brady bashed Derek Carr a little bit. That's my mm. guy. You know, he said <laughs> that they'd rather keep this motherfucker than than have me. You know, a future Hall of Famer. So yeah, well, hurts. I mean, he's not wrong. But yeah, butterf- he's not wrong. Butterfly effect. You never know. I mean, Henry Ruggs could have been all pro and said all oh, penitentiary. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> he would have he would have been like, uh, what's his face on the longest yard? The the which one? He, he wouldn't have been Cheeseburger Eddie, where he's handing out McDoubles yeah. in prison. <laughs> I don't I don't remember really anyone besides Adam Sandler. Oh, Chris Rock well, was in it, right? Chris Rock was in it. Uh, Michael Irvin was in it. Bill yeah. Romanowski, Goldberg, yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kevin Nash, <laughs> yeah. Nelly. Yeah. Oh, great. I'm going to have to watch that one again. I haven't seen it in a while. I think he just shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fucking great. Yeah, but obviously... Well, uh, uh, another thing, how do you keep that a secret for that long? How how did that not come to light? Like, was yeah. it just John Gruden, Dana White, Gronkowski, and Brady, the only four people in the world that were privy to that information? Like, that's incredible news. I well, mean, I he mean- just, like, dropped it, like... Oh yeah, that reminds me of this time that I uh, recruited you and Tom, and it was almost a done deal. It's like, wait, what? It, you there? <laughs> there was a plan in place for Brady and Gronk to come to Tampa. I mean, two things. Uh, I'm sure the Raiders want nothing to do with that information being leaked uh, because of what happened the season after with Brady winning the Super Bowl. So they were probably like, "Well, we're telling nobody that this happened." Um, and secondly, I, I mean, Brady kind of did say it on the, the, the one show that LeBron has on HBO, The Shop, where he's, he said exactly what I just said about uh, Derek Carr. Um, so, I mean, where is this? Why'd that just turn off? Um, I'm, well, I, I, I just I, put lights on the back of my TV, so mm-hmm. like it's kind of cool having them on. Um, oh, yeah. But, but for well, some you, reason, it's like you not can see turning mine. on behind yeah. me the and stream I think, can't but so i i have a small case of adhd so i saw yours and i'm like wait mine aren't on <laughs> and then i just lost my whole train of thought yeah um another thing though i guess because what year was uh gruden like how many years had he been with the raiders like this was two years ago right at that point i think it was like 20 like he was there for a couple years already right I think he started in 2018. If I if I'm <sighs> all right, and all I'm getting at is like, at what point are you the owner and you're like, well, I'm gonna pick Brady <laughs> over Gruden. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. This guy's saying he's choosing Derek Carr over Brady. Well, I'm picking Brady over you, bozo. Like, what the fuck have you done for us in all these years? You've been. I'll tell you what, man. This guy's got a fucking great arm sitting down with all the the rookie quarterbacks coming in the NFL draft. Like, won one I Super mean, Bowl a, with Tampa, and they think he's fucking Vince Lombardi. It's a giant L, you know. Being a Raiders fan, there's a lot of L's that I've taken since 2001. So, this is just another one. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it, ignorance is bliss. It would have been better off mm. left unsaid. Um, but here we are, and you mm-hmm. know. Well, they do call. I'm, try- them- <laughs> I'm trying to find the positive in this, Austin. You know, there is none. So all- don't stop well, trying. Well, there is for me because <laughs> I I witnessed Brady live in Tampa, and I that's my positive. That's my positive throughout this whole entire situation. Well, they don't call them the L Vegas Raiders for nothing. Oh my god. <laughs> I I don't know if anyone calls them that. I just they thought don't. of it. So <laughs> they don't. Well, now I, I hope that catches on. Zero people call them L Vegas. L Vegas, because they're a walking L. Technically, it would be L Vega, right? Because the Vegas would be the plural form. I don't think. I, I mean, uh, it's it's a nickname. I don't and think also, we're La, getting too literal. It'd be, it'd be La Vega. So you're just dumb and stupid. I was just making a, a silly joke. <laughs> it wasn't silly. Stupid. It wasn't a joke. Dumb. What are we? Okay, so what are we trying to transition into? Are we talking real football? Are we talking fantasies? 
Yeah, Talking I mean. Talking dicks and Disney. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> dicks and Disney. What was the idea behind that again? Oh, you already forgot? I thought it was a million dollar idea. It, it is a million dollar idea. Oh, making t-shirts with just a bunch of dicks on it. Yeah. Like Got Disney it. themed, but dicks instead of like characters or whatever. Or like maybe the the roller coaster ride is like in the shape of a penis, and you got Mickey Mouse and Goofy just riding the dick. Yeah, no, that'd be that'd be yeah. incredible. Yeah, I like that. Um, well, I mean, we could we could transition into fancy football. Some big news today out of the Insane Games Queensberry League. Um, last night, the announcements of where people were drafting happened. Uh, what do they call that? The the race is there like a certain name for that or uh, just a randomized race yeah. of football players online that just you know decided our future in the league and where we're picking. Um, Austin, you got fifth place in that, so yep. Austin then drafts fifth. Favorite guy, number? It's a good omen. My guy, of course, you know, naturally drafted twelfth. You know, mm-hmm. being in last place. Um, which I then, uh, bigger news today, uh, came out in the press around 5 p.m., uh, traded my 12th pick, swapped it with Tom for number seven, which I think was a, 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 a ideal business move. I think it was smart. Uh, yeah, no, that's not bad. Obviously, everyone has their own opinions. I'm sure Tom's been grinding on the, uh, the mock drafts, and he... His analytics have proven that 12 is a better spot. Can I just say, I it's so fucking annoying when all you guys, every time, I mean, what is this, my third year? Yes. Second, second year? I don't even know. I think well, it's your third. It feels like a, a eternity. Every year this group text goes out and half the league is like, I quit. I'm not in it this year. Wow, this is, I fucking hate you guys. You suck. And what, <laughs> I'm like, okay, are we even having a league this year? And then come week one, everyone who said they're out is in yeah why do you you guys just bitch for the sake of bitching yeah so it's a running joke first off um we just always threaten to quit or we say that the league is dumb and it's stupid uh if we don't like something and primarily uh this had originated from multiple times when dan we really do it when dan was commissioner and we would push his buttons. Anytime that we would say this, he would get really angry. Um, and then and then he would personally call you <laughs> and be like, listen, are you are you really leaving? Like, like what's wrong? And you got to do the damn voice. But, um, you know, it, it, it stemmed from that. And I think now everybody just says it just as a joke because they know, you know, it, it, it pisses off the commissioner. And well, it really made. It really made Dan mad. So you ran him out of town. He fucking he gave up his role as commissioner. Well, I I talked to the ex commissioner today. Uh, Yeah, had had a little phone chat with him. Uh, From what it sounds like, I mean, he had his last straw on Saturday with a few of the league members that we have. Mm. Um, And he 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 contacted Nico, and they agreed on terms. And now Nico is our (laughs) uh, rightful commissioner. Don't know how I feel about that can't trust that guy more than i can throw him but well i mean the title of fantasy football commissioner is arbitrary like fucking raider could be a fantasy football commissioner (laughs) all he gotta do is fucking set up the teams and click fucking start league like everything it's not like they control anything it's not a tyranny this is a democracy set in place where we vote on everything so i don't understand why people one get mad at the commissioner in place and two care you know, if it changes or, you know, who else, if someone is a new commissioner? Well, I think in the Queensbury League, everybody thinks that Dan had, like, or had most of the control on what happened, what rules were in place. Um, and I told him today, I've, I've never been in a league that's more dramatic uh, oh, than, yeah. than this one, um, you know, threatening to quit or, you know, freaking out over small rule changes that people in other leagues have been doing for centuries now, AKA PPR. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's just the Queensberry league. And I think honestly, at the end of the day, I think this is what makes this league so competitive is how passionate people are in their own ways of like bitching and whatnot. So mm-hmm. 
I enjoy it, and I enjoy you know being one of the the loudest when it comes to bitching too. Yeah, um, I like you said, you've been in it for a lot longer. There's a ongoing joke that I, I wasn't privy to. Um, you know, you know all the guys a lot better than I do. I mean, shit, I, I came in and for some reason I just became the instant villain. Now every time I take a breath, I'm getting fucking <laughs> thumbs down on my texts and fucking <laughs> shut the fuck up. You, you this guy, what does this guy do? Like, what, I, what, did I, what did I do? That's a good question. Uh, why the fuck do you hate me? <laughs> fuck, don't trade with him. No one trade with Austin. You fucking asshole. Like, shit, I know I am what I eat, but still. Well, I mean, you did trade AJ Dillon for Justin Jefferson last year, so I don't want to hear it. It wouldn't have made a difference. How so? I mean, I the the weeks that mattered because I well I got a buy right and I didn't play until the semis. I think that game, like it wouldn't have changed where I finished in the standings. And to that game, I want to say AJ Dillon almost outscored Justin Jefferson. Also, you can't even put like a one to one comparison because who the fuck else would I have started at running back? I had receivers I could plug and play. Um, I had no one through running back, and of again. Was A.J. Dillon my first choice? No, but everyone else in the league has fucking decided that they don't want to trade with me. So that was the only thing I was fucking left with. And Tom was like... Tom... Tom Tom something, man. He's like, what was it? Oh, oh, Damien Harris. You want Damien Harris? And he's like, A.J. Dillon is fucking stupid trade. A.J. Dillon by far outscored Damien Harris. Uh, for the for the rest of the season, that point on, but he still just like won't admit that he had a bad take. Like, oh no, if you look at the numbers, like, look at the only numbers that count are the numbers from that point on to the rest of the season. I mean, Damian Harris last year had like a touchdown a game. It was absolutely absurd. Like, yeah, he... so did Derrick Henry until he fucking broke his foot. And yeah, but the difference me. is, is Damian Harris would have like nine points, and six of those would be from a touchdown. Oh, so, for sure, yeah. I mean, but also like AJ Dillon, uh, Aaron Jones was hurt at the time. He was the clear cut RB one, and even so, when AJ, uh, Aaron came back, they were like fifty fifty in touches, and Dillon had all the goal line touches. Like, I don't know, people just get upset for no reason, well, when, and they don't like to admit that I'm a fucking fantasy football savant. Stop. I'm a fucking genius. Stop. Well. First of all, you fell into the trap of the Queensbury League and, you know, you you made a trade that here's where they're coming from. Here's what they're saying is you made a trade of a, let's say, top eight player in fantasy football for someone who's like a top 50, you know, but what they don't exactly what you said, what they don't realize is in the moment, yeah, you have like six wide receivers that you could do and no running back. So, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do in the, you know, best way possible for your team to advance and survive. Yeah. I mean, it's like a captain. It's like a on paper aspect of it. Hey, you got to do whatever the fuck you got to do to survive. It's like captain going down with a sinking ship because he's got all this gold on it and he doesn't want to take a little fucking raft to, to safety. It's like, I, fucking had to give up one of the best players in fantasy football because i had no other running back options um it's just I'll, it is what it is i'll ask you a question austin you're picking number five right yeah um if there is a player on the board and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to because i know how some people are if there's a player on the board that falls to you who is that player that you're absolutely hoping for like that's in the top four that i'm hoping falls to me or, uh, you know, just someone that you're not expecting, but you hope. Uh, I mean, maybe Dalvin Cook. That's the only person I could see in the top four. I'm looking at, on uh, you know, Fantasy Pros has uh, or is a standard or P? Oh, it's a standard. Let me look at PPR. Oh, well, half they actually, PPR. they have a half PPR too. Um, so let's see, half PPR, a little bit different. 
Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup. So these guys actually have Henry at seven um, for half PPR. So I, I would love to take Henry. Um, I've always felt that running backs are, are more important, uh, especially in a half PPR league, Tyler, as opposed to full PPR. Um, I I think just the, the overall crop of wide receivers, you know, you can get a wide receiver two, wide receiver three in later rounds that you can start and, you know, be productive. Like there's 32 starting running backs in the NFL, right? Um, you know, you got to start two. That's 16 right there. And, you know, 12 man league, you know, you're only going to get two, maybe three starters. Obviously you get the Kareem Hunts, the AJ Dillons, um, you know, the, the backup guys, I, I can't think of any others right now that, you know, split touches, get, you know, more touches than typical backups. But where I was going with that, I just think running back is a much more valuable position. So to answer your question in the longest way possible, like I traditionally do, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have Henry fall down. Um, you know, they have Jefferson Cup, 5'6", uh, Jamar at 8". I, if Jefferson had a better quarterback, I, I think he could easily be the best wide receiver in football. I don't trust him. I, I, I think it's tough. It's going to be tough for Cup to, you know, reproduce the numbers from last year, especially with the addition of Allen Robinson. Yeah. No, I, I mean, when you look at those standings, and especially with half PPR, you know, seeing how high they have mm -hmm. Cup specifically going is, is, is hard for me. Um, because I, I mean, I think, I think Cup's a great player. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. I know Justin Jefferson's probably going to have a, a lot better of a year. Um, and I honestly think Stefan Diggs is going to have a, a better year than Cooper Cup. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, very excited for how the Bills Mafia and Bills are going to play this season. Uh, I, and Stefan Diggs, I feel like his numbers are only increasing, you know, slightly, but you know, they're increasing year over year um, um i am worried about you know a big one is obviously jamar chase i mm. uh, don't know how well that offense is going to play this season especially with a lot of teams knowing what they're capable of now and also their schedule is a lot harder than last year so that that jamar chase like t higgins tyler boyd those kinds of guys kind of scare me um I mean, that offense is going to be prolific, though. Oh, 100%. And, and I, I think the uh, the fact that their defense isn't great, is, you know, probably bodes well for fantasy as well because they're going to be in a lot of high-scoring games. Um, and, you know, obviously they have a, a solid quarterback in Burrow that can spread the wealth. But I guess, like you mentioned, Tyler, you worry about pr productivity because Jamar Chase now clear-cut wide receiver one. But you do have T. Higgins. You do have Tyler Boyd. You have Joe Mixon out of the backfield. And, oh, wait, they added Hayden Hurst, who, you know, is is no scrub at the tight end position catching balls. So yeah, there may not be enough passes in that offense to have a, a, a wide receiver one in this league. Yeah, and, I mean, again, that's just what makes it kind of hard for me picking someone like that in the first round. Who do you want? What, you're at eight now or what? I'm at seven. Seven? So they have... They have Henry there right now. Like I said, Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, Eckler, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, Derrick Henry. Um, then Chase, Harris, Mixon, Diggs, Swift, Kelsey. Who who you want out of out of those guys? Obviously, like Taylor's probably gone. You don't like McCaffrey. Any any other like Eckler? Um, I mean, if I'm being honest, I think Justin Jefferson's probably number one on my list mm -hmm. at seven. Um, but if he's gone by then, you know, I'm highly considering uh, Najee Harris at that point, uh, especially for half PPR, um, and especially if Austin takes Derrick Henry <laughs> at five. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I just think I'd be reaching if I go cup. I think I'm reaching if I go mix in. You know, at that point in, in that, I think I'm reaching a little bit. If I don't get, you know, a, a, a Harris or Justin Jefferson, who I, I personally think Justin Jefferson is going to be the best wide receiver this year st statistically. 
um, especially with having the L.A. Rams offensive mm-hmm. coordinator as their head coach now. So I'm actually kind of excited to see how well he plays. But well, Where's Mike pick? Because he would definitely take him, right? Um, I think Mike is right. I think he's right after you. He might be he's six. six so yeah, yeah you're definitely not getting justin jefferson hey yeah so at that point yeah i i know it's gonna go jonathan taylor i know it's gonna go either cmc or eckler um i think they're just gonna swap two and three um well let's look now let's look um so now it's dan he'll take taylor tj he's he'll, taking he'll CMC. probably take mccaffrey no no yeah yeah um, actually I could see TJ taking Eckler. He does like Eckler a lot. But I think if if Adams mm-hmm. at three, whoever TJ doesn't take is who Adams going to take. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Nate. I could kind of see Nate taking Henry, honestly. I don't know why. I think I think Nate's either going to take Henry or Justin Jefferson. Mm-hmm. So then I'm, I'm left with... Uh... Okay, so we still got Dalvin Cook in the mix there. Oh, God, dude, if you, I, I don't know if I can invest a, a top five pick on Delvin Cook after all the injuries, you know. Honestly, Austin, if you don't take, uh, if you don't take Dalvin Cook, I think Mike's gonna take Dalvin Cook. He loves Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Well, is he a Vikings fan? Because I feel like he had a hard no, on. No, he's for a Del- Raiders fan. He oh. he he's a Raiders fan, but he I don't know. He just loves. Like he had Madison. He had fucking yeah. Jefferson at one point. I think one year, and then he had. You know, Dalvin Cook. Oh, I don't know. You might have sold, honey. Like, at 12, 12, 13, you could have probably got, like, Swift and Devante. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds a lot better than Najee and CD. I won, my, I won my championship at, at, at the seventh pick or middle of the road. Um, I just feel more comfortable there. I I hate the... You know, pick, pick, and then, you know, wait fucking 24 picks and then pick, pick. Yeah. So I like I like it spread out. I feel like I have uh, more time to, to figure out who I want. Uh, and it allows for other people, in my opinion, it allows for people to reach mm-hmm. and for me to have guys fall to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this year I'm going to be patient. I'm not going to I'm not going to be the one reaching. I'm going to be the one you know, receiving and allowing people to fall to me. It's a smart, it's a smart, uh, method. Is there any worries about like Henry not coming back at full health? No, I mean, he's back full. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's well, back. Cause full. obviously he played last year with the plate in his foot, but I didn't know if he had any like regression from that because people were saying like it could have made shit worse or, I don't know, but he's been pretty solid for sure. I mean, fuck. I'm just looking at his numbers. Like, wait, tw- so twenty twenty so, was ridiculous. So, so what did we say? Taylor, CMC, Eckler, and then who's four? On this list, it's Dalvin Cook. No, who's four in the league? It's Nate. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I think Nate. I think Nate takes uh derrick henry 100 mm. percent. so five would be who you me yeah i i don't know at that point i'd probably have to go cook i guess i don't think i've ever had him on my team i've just always stayed away from him but i don't know <laughs> cook I, or naji i don't know cook on cook crime yeah <laughs> what, what, what would be a good fantasy name for that cooking with the cooks just yeah like cooking Cooking with cooks. Um, the cookie bunch. Cook owns cooks. <laughs> the cookie bunch. I don't know. Just do like the Brady Bunch picture with like me and Dalvin Cook and all the squares. <laughs> I don't so, know. Dal- so we'll, for instance, we'll say Dalvin Cook goes. Then six is who? Mike? Uh, no, Mike was... Yeah, six, yeah. So I think Mike is the first one off the board, taking Justin Jefferson, leaving me in, in shambles and sad. Oh, well, if and that then works, I then was... Cooper Cup's still there. Well, I, would, I think I would, at that point, I would probably go for Najee. Okay. I'd feel uh, comfortable with that. Yeah, I think that's a safe pick. Um, easy. 
Man, they got Zeke so low now. I, I think he has a bounce back here. I agree. I mean, on my current rankings, I have Zeke at uh, pick 29. Yeah, you're right there. They got him 31 here. Um, any rookies or, like, second-year guys you expect in a breakout? Or, you know, you Travis might... Etienne. Okay. Um, I think he's going to have a huge year for the Jaguars this year. I'm excited. Um, also, I'm excited for J.K. Dobbins. Um, I know he fucked me twice last year in mm. both leagues. Um, but Where is he? I think J. I think J.K. Dobbins is going to have a tremendous year because of how much the Ravens run the ball. Uh, they got rid of Marquise Brown. One less option to go with. Obviously, they still have Mark Andrews. Um, Rashad Bateman's going to step up. But that run game is going to be so crucial for the Ravens this year. Uh, that J.K. Dobbins, I think, is going to have a... He's going to be a guy to look for in that second or third round. Probably mm -hmm. third round. Um, but I wouldn't be afraid to go after him with that injury. I think he's still going to have a very productive year. Yeah, I, I will say, Tyler, I do like how, like, um, random, I guess, the the fantasy rankings and players are this season. You know, traditionally it was like, but Danny and Tomlinson, like Derrick Henry, like you know who you're taking first overall, clear cut, and it's the same guys, you know, year in, year out. Now we got a bunch of new faces, a bunch of guys on new teams, right? Devontae, uh, Marquise Brown, uh, Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill, right? Like AJ uh, Brown, AJ Brown. It's gonna be interesting. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, I like I told you before the show, I was going through the list, making my own. Um, Did you check it twice? One of, the one of the methods I do, yes, um, <laughs> is I basically put two or three guys in a, in a group together, in a cluster, if you will, um, and I say, out of these three guys, who would I rather have more? Mm -hmm. You know, Who do I think is going to have a better year? Uh, so, I mean, I, I look at these lists that Fantasy Pros do, and I almost feel like you know, a lot of times they're just – guys that they they i don't even know how to put this it's like guys that they want to go rather than guys that they're actually gonna think are gonna do well like chris godwin <clears throat> at like 66 mm -hmm. i know he's coming off an acl tear it's chris godwin though i mean mm. before his injury last season he had i think almost 90 receptions mm. and more maybe over 90 receptions and he was having a career year I just don't understand. Like, I'd, I'd, I'd almost rather go after a guy like that than Brees Hall. Yeah. Um, imagine how diabolical it would be if, like, Fantasy Pros was someone who was just like, I'm going to make the fakest left list ever because I know all the friends in my league are going to be going off of it, and then I can just come in and have a sick-ass draft. And I think that's exactly what happens because some <laughs> – I mean, honestly, like, you look at some of these – uh, list that they have they have cup going number three i'm like average draft position for cup is number three that's insane there's just no way a, a wide receiver should be going that high mm -hmm. unless they're going to guarantee this dude's going to score 20 points a game all right tyler let's play a little game i know you like to play games with me um now i'm gonna play one with you i feel like fucking su jigsaw guy you want to play a game all right. Would you so like to play a game? It's called Better or Worse. Is this player going right. to have a better or worse season than they did last year? Christian McCaffrey. Better. Cooper Cup. Worse. I this it, there's no he can't go any higher. <laughs> Jamar Chase. Worse. Devontae By Adams. a little. By a little. Okay. <laughs> You know what I want to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, ah, God damn it. Be true to yourself. <laughs> Better. <laughs> oh, someone clip it. We're coming back to this moment right here. <laughs> Better. Uh, um, Joe Mixon. Then last year? Um, yeah, he had a pretty solid year. God, he had a really good year last year. See if I can get. Stats. I'm gonna go better. I'm gonna go better. I know that that's not a hot take, but I'm gonna go better. Twelve hundred rushing yards, thirteen touchdowns. Better. <laughs> All right. Better. I feel good about that. 
Um, let's see who else we got. Tyreek Hill. Worse. By and, a little. I, I don't think yeah. it's going to be much worse. It's just, I mean, you're replacing Patrick Mahomes with Tua. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ Brown. <sighs> Fuck. Better. It's interesting. Not that he had like a crazy year last year, but I, I'm not huge on him this year. Ezekiel like Elliott. Him. Better. A lot better. Okay. Mike Williams. Worse. Our boy DK Metcalf. He had a really bad year last year. Um, I'm going to go better. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he got the contract. He's probably feeling himself a little bit. I'm going to go better. All right. I think Russell Wilson was holding him down also. Really? You think I? Th- uh, well, I, there was that kind of thing, right? Where like they didn't really like each other, or like he right. Wilson liked Lockett better. Yeah, exactly. I feel like Wilson made Lockett who he was. Like we knew DK coming out of college was going to be a stud. Yeah. Lockett, not so much. So mm-hmm. I, I think you know Drew Lock being back there, or whoever's going to be back there at quarterback. I think you know DK is going to like them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, Darren Waller. Better. 100% better. He was hurt a little bit last year, right? Yeah, he missed a few games. Um, 665, two touchdowns. I mean, be hard to go worse than that. (laughs) I mean, you'd have to be the worst tight end in the league to do something like that. I mean, I think a lot of it, he missed a lot of games, but also... You know, we had a, a special teams coach running our team half the year, so. Well, don't talk bad about Rich Passaccia. He's a, he's <laughs> oh, a football okay. guy. Full yeah. of, full well, of grit. Mean, we had him first, so. No. Yeah. You guys were like the the high school sweetheart, and then he moved on, went to college. It was like, damn, there's so many better options out here. I'm going to fucking Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> <This> shit's awesome. <laughs> I got Let nice... me get the worst special teams team possible and go coach them. Well, why wouldn't you want that position? Because if he turns the worst special teams around, then of course he's going to get like, you know, head coaching opportunities after that. I don't think he's ever going to get a head coaching opportunity. And I, I hate to say it because he's a great guy, but, you know, him being at the age that he's at and the way the NFL is going with, you know, new age head head coaches being Mm. in their late 30s early 40s you know i think i think he's fine with that role of being a special teams coach or assistant coach at at that so he's a Mm. he's a guy that just loves being around football and he's a guy that you love having in your locker room i'm glad to have him he was uh just on part of my take they asked him at any point in the game last year against the chargers um you know week what 18 right last game of the season he said Big Tim was there. They asked him, was there any point of that game you were going for a tie? He said, fuck no. I love it. <laughs> I I, yeah. I was very sad when the Raiders let him go, honestly. Yeah. I, think well, we I didn't did let it him the, go. But... We did it for a better reason. You know, I'm sad that we couldn't keep him. I knew we weren't going to keep him. Um, but, you know, he's on to better things, and he's on to, uh, I guess, I guess he just likes fixing things. Greener pastures. He, He's he's a big uh, fixer upper because uh, he fixed up the Oakland or whoa oh. Las Vegas Raiders oh. whoa El Vegas and now he's gonna fix now he's gonna <laughs> El Vegas and now he's gonna fix up the Packers so it's it's nice to see he's like a oh, charity yeah. I get what you're saying now I I don't mean L like Spanish the I mean a capital yeah. letter L because they're oh. losers El Vegas. I was, Yes. Now I see I, you why know, you're confused. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You're like, it'd be L, whatever you said, Va or something. I was like, what is this guy talking about? I'm saying like the it'd letter L, Vega. L Vegas, yeah. because they're fucking losers. Gotcha. Gotcha. GB? What would, what would GB be? Green Bay. Great blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving them we're great getting beer. them this is all around great blowjobs 
So you only make it to third base and you can't finish, you know? That's just mm. classic Green mm. Bay. Mm. That's right on par. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good comparison there. We're we're uh, in Las Vegas. We're lots of vagina, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just might want to take another LV, a little Viagra. <laughs> Keep you in the game. <laughs> It'll help you go to overtime and win it. Yeah. All right. That's all I got. Yep. Same here. All right. Um, it's another Send episode. Maybe Tyler's got his new game set up. We'll see what his Thursday schedule is like. Maybe we'll get another appearance out of him. Um, if not, obviously I will be right I back. I do have a flight early morning on Friday, just so you know. Mm. Well, you can s- you can sleep on there. that. Yeah, there's not an excuse. Yeah, we've we've you and I have both stayed up quite late nights before we had to fly out. Oh, last Thursday I stayed up until two thirty in the morning. So really? Yeah, I didn't I didn't go to sleep after. What the fuck? What did you do? Just <laughs> keep playing fucking the just... frog song. <laughs> <laughs> I had fucking crab fucking ragoon on my TV while I was just beep 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 Isn't that the the frog song or whatever? What song was that? Crazy it frog. Was crazy frog, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, he had himself a night. If uh, you ever want to have a silly goose time, just throw on crazy frog and just vibe out. Sounds like hell. I'd probably go fucking <laughs> sleep in the pond behind your house with the gators and do that. Imagine uh, you're out, you're out by that pond, and then all of a sudden you hear that song from a distance. <laughs> it's dark out. That's like that's, the, that's like uh, in 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 the movie uh, Peter Pan. Remember how that alligator had the the clock in his stomach, and you could hear it coming. Yes. It's like the alligator, yeah. the one alligator in your pond swallowed a Bluetooth <laughs> speaker that's just playing that the whole time. So when he gets close, you just hear that. Oh shit! All right. Uh, I'll be right back Monday Night Gaming, and don't go anywhere. Bye.